Hi there. Welcome to Orgasms for Vulva Owners, written by sex educator Susanna Weiss. Susanna has spent her career helping people, especially women, learn how to orgasm and expand their orgasmic abilities. As a certified sex educator and sex and love coach, she teaches classes such as Orgasms for Vulva Owners and Living Life Orgasmically, and works with people one-on-one to help them overcome sexual blockages and feel more pleasure. Her insights are based on her training as a sex educator and somatic sexologist, as well as the method she developed in her own life to go from never experiencing an orgasm with a partner to orgasming in every sexual encounter. This episode is a general overview of orgasms for all of you out there with vulvas, Whether you're an expert at achieving orgasms or just starting to learn about your body and its relationship to pleasure, this episode is for you. We're going to be talking about how to orgasm, how to make achieving orgasms easier, how to have more powerful orgasms, and how to enhance your orgasms overall. A couple of things you're going to need are a small hand mirror and your preferred lube, silicone, water-based, coconut oil, whatever you'd like. If you don't have a small compact mirror, then you can use your phone's camera in selfie view. So, if you've got everything ready, let's get started. If not, feel free to pause and take a few moments to get situated. All good? Let's go. Before we get started with touching, let's talk basics. What is an orgasm? At its core, an orgasm is a muscular contraction brought on by reaching your personal peak of sexual arousal. During the lead up to an orgasm, blood is flowing to your genitals and tension is increasing throughout your body. When you reach your peak of sexual arousal, the body releases all of this tension in a series of pleasurable contractions. Endorphins, which are chemicals that cause feelings of pleasure, giddiness, and even sleepiness, are released into the bloodstream. Some people find it more difficult to orgasm than others, So if you've never had an orgasm, or if it's a rare occurrence for you, just know that you're not alone. Things such as stress, using drugs or alcohol, or a lack of knowledge about your body's personal pleasure points can all contribute to a difficulty achieving orgasm. With all that being said, orgasms are not a necessary part of sexual satisfaction and fulfillment. Penetrative sex and clitoral stimulation produce pleasure, despite if you reach climax or not. A lack of orgasm does not negate pleasure. The easiest way to achieve better orgasms more often requires a bit of experimenting. This exercise today is going to include a deep dive exploration into your vulva in order to find the movements and locations you enjoy best. The more you know about what makes you feel good, the easier it will be to approach and achieve orgasm. So, in order to understand our anatomy and the role it plays in pleasure, we need to take a closer look and get well acquainted with the vulva. The vulva, which encompasses all of your external genitalia, contains a few body parts. I'm going to walk you through what each structure is and its role in sexual arousal and orgasm. Open up your mirror or camera and take a look at yourself. The first thing you're likely to see is the outer labia. These are the lips that are visible when you're standing up the ones that have pubic hair on them if you don't remove it. These can be touched, rubbed, or kissed as part of foreplay. Some people who are more sensitive like to use a vibrator on their outer labia without spreading the lips. This can stimulate the clit indirectly and is a great start for people who find vibrating sex toys to be overwhelming. If you spread apart the outer lips, you should see another pair of lips. These are called the inner labia. These are typically more sensitive than the outer labia and can be stroked with fingers, licked during oral sex, or stimulated with toys. The inner labia, by the way, sometimes sticks out from beneath the outer lips for some people. Don't worry, totally normal. Inner labia come in all different sizes. Now, I want you to open up the inner labia slightly. You'll see two different holes here, the first one being the vaginal opening at the bottom, If you haven't looked at your opening before, you might be surprised by how small it looks. Arousal and penetration cause this hole to stretch and expand. Above the vaginal opening, you'll see another tiny hole. This is the urethra, the hole you pee out of. 
That isn't its only function, however. This small area can be stimulated and produce a lot of pleasure for some people, ideally using lube and fingers. Let's move up just a little bit further, to the area where the inner labia meet at the top. There, you'll see a flap of skin known as the clitoral hood. You may not actually see the clitoris, though. The hood covers the clitoris at least partially, and sometimes fully. If the clit were constantly exposed, it would probably be a bit uncomfortable. If you lift the hood upward with your fingers, you may be able to see the clitoris itself. It might be barely visible, almost like a tiny bead, or it might be longer and protruding. Everyone is different, and that's okay. I want you to just look at yourself for a few moments and appreciate yourself and your body for exactly how you look right now. Every body is beautiful. Now, the majority of vulva owners find clitoral stimulation to be the easiest way to orgasm. However, everyone's nerves are placed somewhat differently throughout the body, so not everyone gets off in the same way. Some people prefer penetration to clitoral stimulation. Some people's clitorises are too sensitive to be touched, even over the hood. Since pleasure is such an individual and subjective thing, we're going to try a few different forms of touch to see what you enjoy most. For the entire story, please visit audiodesires.com, your safe space for erotic audio experiences. Do you want a happier, healthier sex life? We have hundreds of stories and guides for every mood.